I'm excited to welcome on one of the newest members of the 2021 class and Jalen Delos. What's going on there, bro? How you doing, bro? I'm going, I'm going good. How about you? Pretty good, man. Well, I mean, we talked a couple months ago and stuff's gone down during this quarantine break. You did the reclass. You're going to 2021, the scale factory. What were those movement decisions? Um, I was playing with 2021 for the past summer last year. Mm -hmm. And then my coach and uh, my uh, dad, like, we just felt necessary for us to make the move. It was, it was the best thing for me. Absolutely. And you're a guy that maybe isn't the highest ranked. Not a lot of people know you, but you are one of the hitting guys. You're a guy that's going to become at least a top 50 guy by ranking wide by the end of the year. You play the skill factor this upcoming year. What do you look to prove? I feel I need to prove I'm, I'm the best player inside the country. I'm, I'm, I'm coming at everybody who said I couldn't be ranked. I feel like I'm on the best player in the country in the class of 2021. And you've been starting to show a lot of flashes. People are starting to wake up. You're back on the court now, had some tournaments. Just what did it feel like to be back on the court? Uh, it felt good. You know, we had um, we had, we had played against the Atlanta Celtics. They had three players that's it's, it's top 25, and uh, we had we, we gave them, a, like, a good game. And talk about that game. That really blew up. I mean, you said Matthew Cleveland's been putting on a show. We know Jabari Smith's already been high ranked. J.D. Davidson, Cameron McDowell's obviously elite too. Y'all put up a show out there. What was that game like? Uh, it was a fun game. I mean, I had to guard Matt Cleveland the whole game. I mean, I shut him down. He he, he didn't really do too much. But uh, it, it, it was a very intense game. And that's something, when you look up your name on Twitter, people keep telling you one name, and that's X Factor. You may not be dropping 30 points a game. You might be putting up highlight reel mixtapes every play, but you make you get teams to win. How did you kind of learn to embrace that role? Um, because I had a brother and sister who, I wouldn't say bullied me, but pushed <laughs> me to. So, uh, like, all the time I, I, I used to be around them and they would just push me and stuff like that. So it is just born, born into me. And being an X Factor isn't something that's too popular in today's game. A lot of people want to be the mixtape guy. And we know there can't be 100, 300 guys in the NBA that can all be that. You're a guy that we still need in the NBA. Draymond Green kind of guys, Dennis Rodman's. Who are some of the guys you kind of look to that as being the X factor you kind of like? Uh, Kevin Garnett. Mm -hmm. I really, I really, I watch film with Kevin, Kevin Garnett almost every day. So um, I'm, I'm trying to model my game after Kevin Garnett. And he's going to have a documentary coming out soon. We know he's known as one of the best trash talkers of all time. You began into some battles recently with some guys as well. What, what kind of what, what kind of comes with being kind of having the antics off the court as well? Uh, really, I'm just I'm just I'm just like that on the court. Like off the court, I'm cool, chill. But on the court, it's just like a different me. I don't know. It's something that's in me, like just telling me talk trash, just be a dog. On the court. And one of those guys you really did heavy on in the Lance Celtics game. What what kind of was that? What was that like? Well, my coach told me from the jump, it's like like uh, being his ear. Like, just bothered him the whole game. So, I, I, did, I did what I had to do, bothered him the whole game. And we know how much talent's out there in Georgia, Atlanta. Who's some of the favorite guys you like to trash talk to? Uh, Robbie, uh, probably Bari. Uh, well, yeah, really, really those two, really. Do, does anyone kind of get back with you? Have you ever had, like, someone else trash talk you back? Uh, not really. Nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> Nobody really talks back. Except for Rob, I give him that. He, he, I guess Rob, Rob tried to talk back, but he didn't. He wasn't successful. And obviously, I mean, Robbie's another great player. You guys did have some stuff off the court as well. That is my guy too. I mean, what what, what kind of went into that? Oh, uh, because 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 Robbie was talking trash for like two months, so I had to had to shut him down. He he, he only scored two points, so I, I basically won the battle. For sure, and. I mean, you, we don't know how this COVID is going to keep affecting AAU. You were with Team Huncho for however many more games you do get to play with. Why did you choose them? Because um, Coach, Coach Johnny, loyalty. Uh, I've been working with Coach Johnny for how long I knew. Just loyalty. And that's something that's big. We see so many teams are sponsored by NBA players now. Obviously, it's Quavo's team with you guys. What's it like having someone like a rapper, especially as well-known as Quavo, kind of back your team and fund it? Um, it's fun. I, people always ask me, like, well, what's it like to be around him? But, like, to me, he's like a regular person, like, like basically a brother to me. Well, well, to everybody on the team. So, he always checks up on us, comes to games, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. What's your favorite moment about being around him? 
uh, probably in California when um, it was me and him and like a couple of my teammates. Uh, it was uh, a, a video, a, a little music video we had shot, but that's probably the best moment. That's awesome, man. Let's kind of go through your high school career a little bit more. You've gone to a couple of different schools. You started off at Islands as an eighth grader playing there. What was that like getting to play at the high school level so early? Um, it was it, it was a tough challenge because I was playing against seniors, so I had to get used to it, like the bruises and everything. But I loved it because right now it, it, it's really, really what made me who I am today. You got to play with your brother for a couple of years there. What was that like? Uh, <laughs> it was funny because I, I already didn't even play. I already watched him play, but I was on the team, so – it was fun watching him play and like even practicing with him and stuff like that. And we're talking a little more about your high school, but your family is a family of athletes. Your brother, obviously, Kalen, going out to play with FSU. He's a linebacker out there. Your sister's a track person at Ohio State. What's it like just having athletes run your family? Um, it's great. Uh, I learn, I learn, I learn from them almost every day. Hard work, work, work ethic, and what it's like to be in college, and yeah, all, all the connections they make and stuff like that. So I really love them for that. Oftentimes we see siblings usually stick to one sport. It's very rare. They all play different sports. And as I said, three different sports. You guys are all high major players. And what's it like just being able to see everyone play different sports? Um, it's fun because I used to travel to Tallahassee to watch Kellen play. I used to travel to Ohio or Florida whenever Taylor's running. So it's great to see uh, my, um, my siblings doing great. And I can imagine you and Kellen's obviously played some one-on-one -on -one games before. How do those games go? Uh, he fouls me a lot, but he, he doesn't win. I don't know last time he played one on one, but it, it's been like some years playing one on one. But I don't think he can beat me now. Has your sister ever got involved in those? Uh, tell us she played basketball in her freshman and sophomore year in high school, but she she never played one on one. Okay. Have you ever tried running against her? Uh, no, I'm not racing. Nah, I have no tried to race. Absolutely, and we know the man of the family. Obviously, your dad. He kind of obviously raised you guys. He's a huge person in your guys' community. What's it been like growing up with him? Uh, it's been an honor. I, I can learn from him. He teaches me, like, what was like being a leader inside the community and um, how hard to work. So it, it's been great. And he was an athlete, but also served in the Air Force for a while. What, what's it like just having that military Air Force kind of background? Uh, he, he, he's, he's tough on us. I give him that. He's, he's tough on us, but I guess he just wants the best out of us. So. It's good having that around and what he did. And he's known as not just a guy that's a great dad for you guys, but also a guy in the community, as you said. He helps a lot of kids. Just yes. knowing that your dad's a huge community person, how does that kind of help you strive to want to be kind of like that? Uh, it helps me want to be like him a lot because I have – well, since I'm, like, kind of known in Savannah, I have people, like, little kids text me on Instagram, like, asking what they need to do, like, like to be great. So I'm telling them hard work. So basically him, him put that in me. It makes you want to help other people. What would you say was your favorite memory growing up with your siblings? Uh, when we used to always run track when we were little. That's probably the best memories we had. Mm -hmm. And in terms of your dad working with you guys out or however that was, the first memory that comes to your mind with you, your dad, and just your family in general? Um, my dad never actually – that's one thing about us. He never actually worked us out because he said he never wants coaches because mm -hmm. he always let other people coach us. So uh, I never really – he never trained me or none of that. He just – he was just there to support. How about off the court? Is it maybe the first – what's the first memory that comes to your mind off the court with you guys? Um, traveling, all along car rides, mm -hmm. probably that. That's awesome. And let's get back to your high school career. You play at Islands for a couple of years, and you make the move to Gray Academy for a year. What was that decision to go out there? Um, cause I actually transferred to a school called Johnson in Savannah, but I wasn't eligible to play. So my dad, uh, he had, he had hit some folks up and, uh, Gray was like one of the schools that's close to home. So I transferred there and we played a, a great schedule, play IMG, play at City of Palms, good tournaments, but it was just, I needed some, like something bigger. So I moved to Atlanta. And that's where you played your last year where you really started to get a lot more national attention. What was that original decision? Why'd you choose them? Um, Coach Johnny, his son was going there, and most of my teammates from AAU transferred to Burke Marsh. So we might, like, we might as well just team up and do something great. So we made it to Elite Eight. And uh, that was the first time in 14 years in school history. And you, one of your teammates is another high-profile guy in Malik. What was it like playing with him? Oh, <laughs> that's my boy Malik. <laughs> we like this. Hey, Malik a dog. He's he going to be good. And he's another one of those guys that, as you said, is another just elite national known player in Atlanta, in Georgia. 
where do you think he's going to – what's the next level for him? Where do you think – how far do you think he can go? Um, Malik has a chance to be one of my best players at 2022. Malik really can go to the NBA if, if, if he works how, how he needs to work. But, yeah, I, I love playing Malik. And we see all these big-name teams, one of those North Coast. You guys got to go up against them. The first time you guys blew a lead, but the second time you guys got them to get regionals, to get your coaches 200 career win. What was that game like? Uh, that game was intense. We had Alba Kamara there. The crowd booed me before the game because it's, it's, it's me versus Norcross. Like, they hate me in Norcross. So, <laughs> going in there and, and beating them, hey, it's probably the best feeling. Is that a typical thing to most crowds not like you? Uh, no, it's just Norcross. Norcross hates me because I, I just – I'm a dog, so I guess they don't like that. Mm-hmm. You said I'm talking about Alvin Kamara being there. It's a high-profile guy. I know Atlanta, like, they got a lot of guys that come to games. What's it like just being in that kind of high media, high popularity kind of society? Uh, it's fun. It's loud. It's competitive. It's probably the – the um, seven days probably like the, the – basketball in Georgia probably the best at, 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 at everywhere, yeah. Seven days probably the best. And take us to that game. You guys, the first time I said you guys lost that game, how do you guys kind of get ready and – be able to do what you guys pulled off in the, in the playoff game? Um, Coach Phillips, actually, he, he, he worked really hard on the film and, and what they do. Because I, I played against Josh Josh Taylor and, and Thor, like, twice before that. So, like, I, I, I know what they want to do. And my team, I just told them, hey, come in here and be dogs, and we're we going to come out with this win. It's like what we did. We came out with the win. And throughout the last season, what was your favorite matchup of the year? Uh, McEachern for first game of the season versus Sharif. I dropped 35. He had 40. Going back and forth the whole game. That's just another great Atlanta guy. I mean, let's talk about that. You're, you're living out there in Georgia. Personally, I think they're up there with one, one of the best states, if not the best state in America. What's it like playing out there? Uh, it's tough every game. I give you that. It's, it's the best. And, like, if you, like, good how you say you is, come to Georgia see how good you are. So, it's, it's, it's good. It's good playing in Georgia. Probably the best basketball. Where do you rank Georgia up in, in America? Number one. Um, yeah, number one. And what's your top five of states in America right now? Um, probably Georgia, DMV, uh, New York, California, and Texas. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, man. And I always talk about you make the moon out of the skill factory. They bring in talent. They're getting guys to college. They even got a guy now to the G League route. How excited are saw- you out there? Uh, it's good because Rob, he, because Rob been on me hard, been working out and stuff. He just, um, all this Corona stuff is messing up. So I can't wait till I, I get on campus and get to work. And you get to go through a national schedule now. You got to travel across the country, across the world. Hopefully with the COVID stuff, we don't know, obviously. But what, what's some of your biggest goals personally have for yourself from next year? Um, I, I want to have a contract to the G League out of TSF. Um, I, I want to be top five in the country. I want to score a thousand points. I have a lot of goals. You mentioned something that's pretty big there. I want to, that's the kind of last thing I want to touch up on is recruiting process. We mentioned the G League route. It's a new route coming out. What do you like about that? Um, where it's not really no school. You train for a year and you get paid. Mm-hmm. So if that's available to you, is that what you're going to take? Uh, probably so, yes. That's big time, man. Obviously, they have talked about offering the education aspect as well if you wanted to take it. Would you be interested in probably taking the education route, the college academics, if you took the G League route? Of course, yes. That's big time. And a year from now, I can imagine some goals are McDonald's All-American, Jordan Brand, moving up the rankings. A year from now, what, what's awards that you think your name will be on? Um, definitely Jordan Brand Classic. McDonald's All-American, I'll be on the list. Uh, I think I'll be – Rank it's our top five on, on ESPN and 247. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's big time. And if college is the right you're going to take, you're pulling in offers right now as well. Let's talk about some of those. Iona's an interesting one. Coach Patino's there. What do you like about this program? Coach, Coach Patino actually offered me off a Zoom call, and, like, he said he, he likes players who, who can shoot the three. So I'm, I'm, I can shoot the three, and uh, he, he loves my game. They call me almost every day. So, yeah. And when you look at that, it's not a power five. It's not some big school you think about off the top of your mind. But it's Coach Patino. He's a legendary yeah. coach. How much more pain does that make a school like Iona to you? Uh, yeah. That's basically, he, he, he is still in the deal. Is His name carries a lot of weight. So playing for him, probably, probably like one of the best things you can do. Another one is you recently got HBCU school. We know the movement for that. Is that something you would consider? 
of course, Texas Southern, yeah, coach, coach calls me, coach John Jackson calls me, and like, uh, he's he he loves me, he he's ready for me to commit right now. So, Texas Southern, I'm, I'm probably gonna take an official Texas Southern, mm -hmm. so, so I can show the um, show them some love because they've been on me hard. If we go back a few months ago before this really became a legit thing for a lot of guys, before McCurr, before all this happened, would you have considered them as much as you are now? Uh, yes, because I, I had an offer from South Carolina State. And that was the first school to offer me was HBCU. So I was always going to take an official to HBCU automatically. Okay, gotcha. And because of all the movement now, is this something you see as a legitimate option? Uh, yes. Take Southern, yeah. Take Southern probably one of the top schools that recruit me right now. Okay. Who are some of the schools you say would be your top guys recruiting you? Um, Ole Miss, Iona, Texas Southern, Kansas State. Um, who else? Georgia. App State, there's a lot of schools involved right now. You mentioned Kansas State. They're a school that brings in a lot of dogs. That's what they're known as. What do you like about Coach Weber and that program? Um, my, um, my, my uncle actually played for him at Western Illinois. So, like, we have a connection. And uh, he, he calls me. Well, he don't call me, but when the, when the assistant coaches calls me, and we talk about life and stuff like that. And when you talk about having a family connection, like you just said, how much more pain does that make a school? Uh, good, because, like, my uncle played there. So, I mean, I, I can play there if you play there. Play mm -hmm. for the coach, yeah. Another one you have offer-wise is Georgia. Staying home, what would that be like kind of being the hometown kid? Uh, Georgia, SEC. I mean, it, it, would be, it, would be, it would be nice to play play at Georgia, but I, I don't think I would, I would end up at Georgia. Okay. And another one is Ole Miss you mentioned. They're a program that's making a lot of movement. They're offering a ton of guys, especially now that they have Matt Morrow. And now you also have David Ruffin. What do you like about that? Yeah, Coach Davis, that's my guy too. Uh, he he on me hard. Uh, I'm supposed to be the, he wanted me to commit uh, for the class of 2021, be the first one to commit and help him get players in. So uh, I'm talking to him and uh, Coach Hamilton right now. Uh, but yeah. And you're talking to him, obviously. What? How great is he? I mean, a lot of people are kind of wondering how does he go out and land back to back guys, top 25 star recruits, and almost not known for that. How, co how special is the coach? Uh, he's he, Coach Davis. He's he, he's a he's a nice guy. Coach Hamilton really 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 wants me. He, he was the first SC school to offer me, so I'm gonna keep that in the back of my head. When was the time for me to make my um choice? But yeah, Coach Davis. He 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 he's you know what he's doing at Ole Miss. And once again, if college is your option, is staying close to home any kind of priority to you? I, I, everybody doesn't matter to me. I'll go anywhere. That's awesome. So give us kind of your things. What are you looking for in a college? What's maybe three or four things you have to see in a college to commit there? Um, a point guard that, that, that I can get along with, uh, the school education first, and then uh, the team and, and uh, how it's run and basically coaching staff. Some of those things are what a lot of guys say, but one in particular, not a lot of people talk about the point guard position, which is kind of the leader of a team to a degree. What's the kind of point guard you want? Do you want a scoring guy? Do you want a passer? What kind of point guard do you want? Uh, pass and can score and defense is a dog. I need I need a point guard is a dog on defense and bow down. You have taken a visit as well to Clemson. What was that visit like? Um, my um brother was playing against them, so I really went there to see him play. But the visit, uh, it was nice. Uh, took pictures and stuff, taught all the coaches and stuff, watched them practice. It was nice. And we know once the stuff's all done, you're probably gonna want to go on some visits you already talked about. What schools do you kind of already have set up or are wanting to set up once you can? Uh, I have official with the Ole Miss set up already. I'm going to take an official to Iona probably, mm -hmm. Texas Southern, and I'm probably going to get some more offers soon. So I'm going I'm to cut down my list real soon. Who are some of the schools that are heavily interested in you that have yet to extend the offer? Uh, Texas Tech, Arizona State, Colorado, Virginia Tech, and then some more schools. One of those I really want to touch up on is Arizona State. They're a school that in the Pac-12 wasn't always regarded as the best conference, but they just land more top top 10 guys than any other conference, and they have Jay Guff. They have Marcus Bagley. Come off a big-time year. What do you like about Coach Hurley in that program? Uh, I, I love his coaching style, how, how, how he lets his team plays and shoot threes and want to play defense and how he is on the sideline and how he interacts with his players and stuff like that. Yeah, I would love that for him. How about cutting down your list? When's the kind of date you'd like to have your list cut down by? Uh. September, October around there. And then do you have an idea about when you want to commit by? Next year, April. Okay. Why is April? Because um, it's 
April is my birthday, so I'm gonna probably commit on, on my birthday. <laughs> That's big time, man. And my last thing before I let you go, man, is this is gonna be obviously a long ride of basketball. You're gonna be playing for a long time. What do you want the legacy to be by the time you walk away from this game someday? Um, I want to know that uh, I, I'm gonna give back to my community and where I'm from, and like where you from, you can make it. You just, all you gotta do is put in the hard work. Without a doubt, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time to come on, my guy. Can't see what God got next for you next year, man. I appreciate it. Of course, man. You know you're always welcome on, bro. God bless. All right, you too.